Thanks for staying with us. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Now we're talking World Cancer Day and the ongoing battle. Remember that World Cancer Day was uh, on the 4th of February uh, 2024. It's always on the 4th of February. And we have uh, right now uh, joining us Dr. Fejiro Chinyanwoko, CEO, NSSF. Uh, that is a Nigeria uh, Solidarity Support Fund. Good morning and welcome to the program, Dr. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Today. Yeah, I'm just wondering. The the there is Cancer Awareness Month, and then there is um, uh, World Cancer Day. I, I, why was it not? Why were these two not merged together? Why was there a reason they should be separated? Okay, so um, I, the World Cancer Day is to bring into um, the forefront the what what the initiatives around cancer in Nigeria and is to, is to highlight the importance and then the, the impact of cancer in Nigeria, so different from the Cancer Month. Um, and this year's World Cancer Day was really um, themed around the care, um, early detection, prevention, and treatment for cancer. We also know that cancer, we have over 120,000 new cancer cases every year in Nigeria and more than 50% of these people die every year in Nigeria. So the World Cancer Day is to bring that impact to life and also to bring forward the initiatives that are being done as a country and one of them really is on prevention and that's why it's important to us as Nigeria Solidarity Support Fund to speak about this on World Cancer Day because 40% of cancers can be prevented. I'm sure you didn't know that 40% can be prevented, 40% can be cured during early detection phase. And so if we, if we take care of 80% of cancers, then we have just 20% left. And these preventable cancers are cancers that result as a result of virus infections. And one of them is the cervical cancer that is largely caused by the human papilloma virus. Other cancers are like the liver cancers that are caused by um, hepatitis B and C, which also have vaccines to prevent them. So um, as NSSF, what we are doing for World Cancer Day is bringing to mind that 40% of cancers can be prevented by vaccines. And so we're raising awareness again for vaccine uptake in Nigeria. We know that cure for cancer ranges between 30 to 30 million. And um, seeing that we have a population that over 80 million are living with multidimensional poverty, um, and that is living with 3,000 naira or below a day, we know that many people will not be able 3, to. 3,000 is luxury. A day. It's <laughs> even luxury. Yes. For some families. Exactly. Yeah. So we know that not everybody will be able to afford the cancer treatment and cure. So why not prevent it with vaccines that are free of charge? Yeah. Mm. I really didn't know 40%. I thought if detected fast, even 100% of this cancer can be treated. But the thing is, like it is said in Chike and the River, a book I read in secondary school, to go as I know how not to return. You know, so it's possible that there could be a cure for even all the cancers, but can it be affordable? Just like you've said, 30 million. So does it gladden you that the federal government just said uh, not too long ago, maybe in a matter of days, that the federal government's health insurance scheme is going to include cancer? Is that it's, part of what really makes you happy? It's actually a very welcome initiative because we know that cancer treatment is very expensive and it's not easily affordable. So if the health insurance can cover cancer, they didn't specify um, what level of treatment because there are different grades of cancer treatments. But no matter the level, it is something um, for the average Nigerian. I'm not sure it should be no matter the level <laughs> because sometimes you go to these uh, the, NIS or whatever NHIS, NHIS uh, facilities and uh, for everything that you complain is paracetamol you get so we need to define what level they are going to get to maybe your organization NSF will do something about that we right. need to know where they will reach okay so cancer treatment why I said there are different levels because there are some that would just require surgery, there are some that require chemotherapy, there are some that require radiotherapy, there are some that require, you know, extended length of time. That's why I said I don't know yet, but I'm sure that it will come up and something we, we need to know. Change. We need to know. But mm -hmm. it is a very good um, initiative because then we can also detect cancer early because even cancer 
screening is expensive beyond the treatment we're talking about early detection so if it if uh, if the health insurance can include cancer that means people can get screening for nothing and that will improve early detection and it will improve cure to cancer okay where are we now on the, the is it hpv vaccine that we talked about last time you were in the studio really? what is the success story or otherwise of it Okay, so the HPV vaccine rollout happened last year, the first phase, and then the second phase is coming up again this year, I think sometime in May, um, by the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency. And the first rollout was quite successful. It was for a stipulated period of time because of the quantity of vaccines available. It was quite successful. Do the resistance, again, like I said, vaccine resistance, resistance mm -hmm. yes, by parents, because it was for the girl child between 9 to 14. So we experienced resistance, we experienced a lot of myths uh, um, and beliefs about um, the vaccine not being, um, not being suitable for the girl child or um, having a debilitating health effect on the girl child. But so far it was very good, the uptick was good nationwide and we are trusting that by the second phase we'll be able to mop up the other girls that couldn't get during the first rollout. And um, as NSSF what we are doing is that we organise the We Niger campaign which is a youth campaign um, in last year from October to December and what we did was to rally the youths around Nigeria to speak about the HPV vaccine, to create content in social media about the HPV vaccine and then to educate people on where they could get this vaccine and we saw that to be very productive because again people were able to hear from non-healthcare workers and how the vaccines can prevent cervical cancer in the girl child and that's really led to um, a lot of mothers taking action with HPV. But that sounds very urban like you know what about the people in the villages some of them don't even have access to uh, the internet or, or the social media so what did you do or what are you intending to do to include this group of people? Thank you. So we're in partnership with the National Primary Health Care Development Agency. Again, that is the government agency in charge of vaccination. And what our partnership is about is providing both financial resources and technical capacity building to conduct outreaches in communities in Nigeria. And that way we are able to reach the rural communities and improve access to vaccine and the last mile. And those access of, to vaccine also go with a lot of health promotions and advocacy for the HPV um, vaccine as well. Mm -hmm. So in partnership with them, we it enables vaccines to go to the last mile. It also enables supervision and monitoring at the at different levels, the world levels, the local government level, the state, and then the national level. With that, our school re project is what we call it, strengthening the conduct of optimized outreaches. With that project, we are able to reach rural communities that are not urban. Mm, very interesting. Uh, well, um, you, you talked about um, creating awareness so that people who come down with this can access uh, medication that is free. You use the word free. Elaborate on that. Let me hear. Okay, so I, I said vaccines. Not okay, vaccines. Oh, okay. <laughs> we need to get that. Yeah. So, because prevention yeah. is vaccines. We okay. use vaccines to prevent um, viral um, mm. enabled cancers. So, vaccines in Nigeria are free. So, the hepatitis vaccine are free for now. HPV vaccines. We need to know that for um, now. Been, is it forever? Um, the routine, any vaccine that is in the routine immunization mm. is free. Okay. It has been free. That's the government's way of, of um, ensuring that it's equitable health Vaccine injury. against cancer? Vaccine against virus okay. cancer. So okay. not all cancers are a result of virus, mm. so a virus infection, but the cancers that are a result of virus infection that have the vaccine are free as long as they are in the national immunization scheme. Okay. Yes. So what lessons did you learn from the last rollout that you intend to uh, fine-tune in the next first is that a lot of non healthcare workers are very ignorant of health of the health impact of things like cancer and um, of things like HPV infection HPV infection right now is occurs in 25% 
of people in Nigeria. But we found out when engaging Nigerian youths and building their capacity and running the campaign that a lot of non healthcare workers are very ignorant with health practices that concern them. So what we intend to do with that is to make sure that we increase the length of time for the campaign. So we've been having this campaign the last three months of every year, but we're, we're intending to increase it to about six months so we have adequate time for health education and health promotion because that would help. Secondly, we found that, that people are becoming very, very um, skeptical about vaccines. It's just like a black box that you don't know why they're skeptical. They don't also know why they're resistant, but most of the time they're just resistant. I think that people just don't like things that are free and that has to enter their body. They may, I don't know what they feel it is. So we, we want to also demystify vaccine use in um, vaccine resistance in Nigeria. What are the issues? Can we have conversations about that can we have town hall meetings in rural communities on social media through twitter spaces can we have town hall meetings can we really talk about what are your fears and why are those are those fears unfounded are they founded can we address the roots of the fear and the resistance with vaccine and lastly is that you know we 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 don't have enough resources to reach everybody mm -hmm. so we need more partnerships we yeah. had private sector partnerships in the last time, and so this time we're going to get more partnerships to reach more people. Yeah, because I was getting worried when you talked about the fact that you were partnering with the primary health care and all that. Yeah, I know they are in the villages. They are supposed to be the ones to talk to the people. Uh, I was worried that I didn't hear <clears throat> anything about the traditional institution uh, being part of it because whether we like it or not, some of these people who work in the villages as nurses and all that, uh, they own very big farms, they go to their farms, they abandon what they're supposed to do, they may not. So I'm worried also about the monitoring. How do you monitor that these people who are given the mandate to educate the others are really doing it? Do they come back with reports? Do they, how was the instrument? Okay, so when we say we partner with the National Primary Health Care, it's because also they also partner with traditional rulers yeah. and then they partner with religious rulers in those community and um, people that have contact with these people that have the trust of the community mm -hmm. as well um, and so with our scory project which is the strengthening of um, conduct of optimized outreaches we are able to support the supervision make sure that there are reports, outreaches are documented, and then um, also m and &E, so which is monitoring and evaluation, is done from the local level, the world level, to state level, mm -hmm. so that we're sure that they are actually conducting these outreaches okay. that money is being invested into. So we have that level of supervision ongoing in state, but we also have that level of collaboration. So when we speak to our town hall meetings, our fireside chats that we conduct quarterly, um, we also bring traditional rulers, we bring civil society groups mm -hmm. together, we bring the private sector um, also together. So we try to bring our stakeholders in vaccine space to make sure that um, we reduce first on the five mortality and then cancers. Oh, that's nice. That's very nice. Okay, so I don't know. Um, uh, what's like the way forward now? What, what are we looking at? Let, let's start with the fact that you have rolled out these things. It's not enough to just say um, it was very successful. What percentage were we able to achieve and what do you intend to achieve later in the next one that is coming up in May? You said yes. May, yes. Okay, so in terms of um, achievements, I don't have the numbers yet, but um, I'm sure that we can we can speak to the numbers exactly. But I said in terms of the quantity of vaccines we had, we exhausted them. Mm. So that's why I said it was Were enough. Um, so to exhaust something means <laughs> they may so, have been. So we had a quantity that we could afford as a nation at that time, which was exhausted. So, yes, and that's why there's all very the rollout. <laughs> that's why there's a, a rollout, there's okay. a second phase, and okay. of course, we'll keep it increasing. Mm -hmm. You know, and as lo little as you think it may seem, is that no, the truth is that we're making progress. Yeah. This is the first time that we're rolling out HPV vaccine nationwide. And countries have been running now for 12 years. So mm -hmm. we are there now with progress. Um, so we would eventually get to 100% of these girls over time. So it won't happen in a day. You hope to have more this time? Yes, of course. Okay. We, it's going to be purchased again by the government. The purchase 
and you know, I, I don't know the number, but they're going to purchase more than they did the last time. Again, because sensitization has gone out. Mm -hmm. So the first time is usually more hectic because people are just learning about it for the first time. But the second time, a lot of health education is being done. So in preparation of the second rollout, so we we hope that this will even be more successful than the first time. And then we we as NSSF we also know that we will strengthen our partnerships with them, and then we would also invest more into making sure that we actually educate people and then they have access to this vaccine. So whoever had the shot last time shouldn't have it again? No, they shouldn't. It's a one-dose um, vaccine. For a lifetime? For a lifetime. Mm, interesting. So is there anything else we can do to make sure they, uh, the message goes uh, viral? That's the word they use nowadays. <laughs> Definitely. I think that for media, um, houses and partners as well as for Nigerians that are listening today I think that um, what will be important is to educate the people around you start from your family your friends your colleagues that the HPV vaccine can prevent cervical cancer in the girl child and for the women that have not gotten the vaccine they can also get the vaccine to prevent cervical cancer so it's very important men are also carriers and so the vaccine is available for men but not under the national rollout so it is they would have to go to maybe private facility to get the vaccine and anti-paid fee why are we all like this <laughs> <laughs> but we know that eventually when we when mm. we have mopped up the girl child then the country will open it up to both male and female after one increase the age range so i would say that when you hear people talking about um, cancers you can speak to them about how it can be prevented. You can speak to them about early detection, and you can speak to them about the NHIS um, registration, so that in case they are diagnosed with cancer, they can get treatment. You can be an advocate for health. You don't need to be a health worker. Oh, we can keep inviting you back <laughs> <laughs> to, to keep talking about it. What other organizations do you collaborate with? I'm just curious. Yes. Okay. So we collaborate with civil society organizations, and there are several at the rural communities. We collaborate with them. We collaborate with also our funders or private sector that fund what we do in health and um, healthcare. Several private organizations for start to mention. No, 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 it's no, really no, it. But in terms of health, we're also collaborating with technology, health technology organizations. We're speaking with them because we also want to make health data public. Because if we're raising advocates, advocates need to have access to health data. You were mm -hmm. asking how many were vaccinated. Mm -hmm. I'm not able to tell you that, right? Because health data is not yet public facing. So we, right now we're in partnerships or we're in talks with health um, um, health organization, health tech organization, where we can use technology to provide data electronically, real time to everyone, just the way we were tracking the COVID-19 spread. Mm -hmm. then with that with the dashboard done by the NC, ncdc we can have that publicly facing data for survey for cancers for vaccines and um, as as you will so that when you are advocating to the government advocating to people you can speak through data so that's our new collaboration yeah i would say the last rollout was a hundred percent because all the vaccines were exhausted so if we had some left we will know the percentage that was left so i'd say 100 percent congratulations to that or to you um we do hope that the next one will be more successful and but, but before you go just talk to the night to nigeria this is the forum you have uh, to to talk to the advocates uh, free of charge <laughs> thank you so thank you. in celebration of the world cancer day I would employ you to first screen and um, screen so do your breast um, examination for a woman if you are above 40 go for your mammogram if you're a man above 40 you need to do your cancer check for prostate cancer for um, the gastrointestinal cancer early check routine checkups um, at least once a year you should screen for cancers at um, depending on your sex, male or female. Um, I would also say what you can do is to advocate for people to go for early detection, for screening as well, so that they can have early detection. And for the vaccine preventable cancers, they are free of charge. You can get it. If you have not been vaccinated for hepatitis B and C, 
this is a good time to go to any health facility to take the vaccine and take your children so it's for children it's for adults it's for everyone take your children take your your workers take your staff um, for that vaccine it is free of charge so it's it, it's it prevents the burden of the disease coming back to you as a primary caregiver then i'll say join forces with the um, national primary health care development agency once the rollout for hpv starts please broadcast it using your channels thank you mm, she had to end with us <laughs> <laughs> and giving us a task we'd like to thank you uh, dr Pedro, for coming on the program as usual it's always a pleasure to have you here thank, thank you so you much having me again. Mm, all right Okay, we've been talking with Dr. Federal Chinye Unwoko, the CEO of uh, Nigerian um, Support Fund? Solidarity. Solidarity Support Fund. And we're talking about cancer and how accessible it is to the various vaccines that you need for it. And let's take advantage of that and make sure that we don't die unnecessarily or get infected unnecessarily or suffer unnecessarily what we could have prevented. And this eventually is where we're wrapping up on the show this morning. It was a pleasure uh, knowing that you are there with us. Let's return tomorrow for yet another edition of the program. My name is Nyam Gul Agaji. Have a wonderful day.